Hello people, this is Furco here, and I just got a really cool new tablet input for my computer. So it lets me draw stuff like the stick figure, which looks relatively smooth as opposed to when I try to draw with the mouse and it looks just nonsensical. So that's pretty good. And since I'm a huge fan of Khan Academy, I thought I'd test out the new tablet by making a video similar to one of his. You can probably tell by the like black background here and the, the colorful brush stuff. So, yeah, I thought I'd show how to solve what I think is a really interesting problem in classical mechanics, and we talked about it in my physics course last semester, but it's called the capstan problem. So, first of all, what is it? Well, a capstan is a sort of wooden cylinder on a ship, and what they do is they wind a rope around it. So let's say the rope on this side is attached to a mast or something that that takes a lot of force to hold in place. So there's a large force pulling on this side of the rope, and we'll call that larger force F sub L for F load. Then what happens is that that rope winds around this wooden cylinder like so. And then over on this side someone holds onto the rope and they only have to pull onto that rope with a smaller force FH for F hold which is less than F load and then on this diagram um, this angle here which is the angle between the places where the rope touches the cylinder or the angle subtended by the rope on the cylinder is theta. Now intuitively you might first think that these these forces have to be the same but what we're missing here is that I can change color. There's some coefficient of friction mu here between the rope itself and the cylinder. So that friction is opposing the motion that this, um, this larger force is trying to cause because this larger force wants to pull the rope this way and make it slide along the cylinder. But because of that friction, uh, that force is, is being stopped. And also because as this load force over here grows larger, this hold force over here also grows larger and therefore the the force with which this this rope system is pulling on the cylinder the, the cylinder is kind of being pulled this way by the rope um, that grows larger with a larger force and because of that the normal force that this cylinder is, is uh, pushing on the rope with that normal force also gets larger and because the frictional force is, co is, uh, is directly proportional to the normal force. Uh, that means that for a larger hold and load force, the friction will be greater. So we actually have a relatively interesting relationship. And the, the point of the question is to find a relationship between F load and F hold as a function of theta. So that's pretty interesting. And when I first saw this problem and, and found a solution and worked through it, um, I was kind of overwhelmed by the method, the strategy we used to solve it here. Um, so let me, let me write that down. I'll just move down a little bit here. And in true Khan Academy style, I'll change colors again. Let's try a hot pink. That's good. Okay, so our strategy to solve this. Um, the problem is that the force of tension, the tension force in the rope varies continuously. It's different at every single point along along the part that's that's stretched across the cylinder. So we have this continuously varying force, which means that we're going to need to to use calculus essentially because it's it's a continuously varying thing to to find it. So our strategy for finding the relationship between these two forces is to consider an infinitesimal or really, really small infinitesimal. Consider an infinitesimal slice. So that's like if we looked at just this really tiny slice here, where this smaller angle is d theta, where d indicates an infinitesimal or differential quantity. So we consider an infinitesimal slice um, subtended by d theta. And when we do that, you can use some, some clever tricks to, 
to change that into a form that's useful. And the sort of equation that we get after we um, then find relationship, um, once we consider that slice, we, what we want to do is find the relationship between the force pulling on it this way, on that end, and the force pulling this way, on this end. And since the load force is greater than the hold force, um, the force on one side will be greater than the other. So our goal is to find the relationship between those two forces. And then because our relationship will naturally be in terms of this d theta here, which is a differential quantity, the equation that we get out of that is, well, you could probably guess, it's a differential equation. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. So once we find that relationship, then we need to solve the differential equation. And that will get us our answer. However, the problem I had when tackling this, this setup here was that I was not at all comfortable with considering differential quantities like this d theta here, and I hadn't seen uh, that approach to solving problems before. So in the interest of making it clear to the viewer that hasn't done a lot of calculus-based physics, I want to look at another problem that uses a similar strategy of considering infinitesimals to show how that can be used to approach a problem like this. So if you're already comfortable with that and you don't want to see that alternate problem, you can skip ahead. Um, I'm going to switch to a slide with a green background, and anytime I have the green, that's, that's going to mean that we're doing some sort of review concept. So um, if you don't want to see this, just skip ahead to the part in the video where it's no longer green. But for those of you that are still here, we'll look at this. So um, in this problem instead, we want to consider a bacterial colony. So there's a colony of little bacterial cells here in my petri dish and those bacterial cells are going to multiply and and create a larger population over time so this is the number of bacteria we have at some time t so we'll make a function p that tells you the population of bacteria at a time t so that'll be p of t and then over here this will be after some amount of time has passed some of the bacteria have replicated and we have a larger population. So this is P of T plus delta T. So this is some amount of time delta T later. And we also have some constant K. Um, K is going to be the proportionality constant that relates the, the, the growth of the bacterial colony to the amount of bacteria you currently have. Because in our example, if there's a larger number of bacteria in the dish, then they're going to increase in population faster because there's a larger amount of bacteria that can divide. So our constant K is going to equal the number of births. Well, I guess you can't really say births because these are bacteria. The number of divisions, let's say, per cell in a, you know, let's say, n amount of time. So, um, yeah, so if we had a colony with, I don't know, 15 cells, and we want to know um, how many additional cells there are going to be after an hour, so we could say 15 times k times one hour, and that would tell us how many bacteria we've gained over that hour. So that's all well and good. However, because the bacteria are continuously growing, we, to find a, a function that tells us how many there are at any given time, we need to, to use calculus essentially because if we just keep using this, um, this setup here, well, well the problem is that this setup doesn't take into account the amount of bacteria that were created during that hour. For example, if um, I don't know, 15 minutes in, we got one new cell. That cell could have divided by the end of the hour, so we're actually missing, uh, we're missing some, some terms here, essentially. So the way that we get around that is by considering an infinitesimal quantity, like we discussed before. So what we want to do is try to find an expression for delta P. And delta P is the change in the bacterial population over a time, delta T. So this will be how many 
new bacteria we have in this time delta t. Or if you prefer, this delta p will be p of t plus delta t minus p of t. And I just noticed that I'm over 10 minutes, so I'm going to continue this problem and then hopefully get back to the capstan problem in the next video. So, ciao for now.